So in the previous tutorial, we took a look at building up a, an entire arsenal almost of these secondary materials down here. And these were a good foundation or basis for us to kind of understand the process that we're going to go through when making each new material graph to be added on top of our chain down there. And this is what's going to afford us the ability now to kind of go in and take a look at uh, some of the more uh, detailed and bigger materials that we're going to have to make. So the first material that I want to make is going to be this uh, speaker area over here, kind of like the bullhorn area. So I'm going to come up and do a new substance graph. I'm going to call this a speaker. And I want to make sure that I can view my outputs here. And we'll just drag this guy in there. Perfect. So now I'm going to contextually edit. And again, the shortcut for that is Control E. And I'm going to start by defining our base color just so that we can make sure that we've masked off everything appropriately. So for this, I'm going to bring everything down, add a blend, and we're going to have to find our uh, bullhorn area in here, our speaker area. And this one is probably a dead giveaway as to what color it is. So I'm not going to have to visualize it on our mesh. I'll just click on this guy here and select that. And bring this guy in. And again, just decreasing this guy. And I'm going to have to make a macro where this <laughs> is already 16 by 16 pixels because this definitely gets a little bit annoying having to bring that guy in every time. But again, different tutorial, different video entirely. So I'm going to bring this guy in over here, plug him in, uh, make sure to view our outputs in 3D there. So now everything's going to show up. And so what I've done in our ID map here is I've made sure that our bullhorn area here and our handle are the same uh, material because they're going to be kind of that same plasticky uh, material. So this is why it's really important that this be a little bit more detailed uh, of a material because it comprises of uh, a good majority of our asset here. So with that, I'm going to take our color and I'm going to bump it up to something a little bit of a, a little bit of an off white here. And again, it looks pretty close to uh, what we have as just kind of like our default color. But as we get adding textures and stuff and working on the normal map for this, that's going to that's going to be a little bit easier to see what we're doing. Cool. So I'm going to leave that for now. And now I want to play around with the normal map of this because um, with, uh, you know, surface space as big as this, we're going to have some uh, more edge information, more uh, normal information for some imp imperfections of our material. So I'll bring this all down and bring this guy out. And one imperfection that um, I want to go ahead and create as little pock marks, little kind of like air pockets or little divots within our uh, mesh here that are going to make it look kind of like it's uh, more like a man made fabricated item. And so, one way to get this uh, desired effect is I'm going to use a tile uh, generator node. And again, you can use a tile sampler node. However, the tile sampler node is just a little bit more. Uh, overkill for what we want to do because it it provides a lot more options, but it also takes up a lot more uh, resourcing power. And the tile generator is going to do everything that I want it to do uh, for a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to, in our tile generator here, change our pattern down to uh, paraboloid. So we're going to get these little marks here, these little circles. And I'm going to Let's we'll just do 64 by 64 for right now. We're probably going to increase that much more as we uh, continue working with our normal, but this will give us something to view. 
All right, so let's get this on our mesh here. So I'm going to add a normal map. And I'm going to just do a normal combine with these here. And you can see that uh, we're, we're going to get this uh, really bedazzled uh, looking megaphone here. Kind of looks cool, actually. It's, it's like rhinestones or something. Um, but uh, this is not a Dolly Parton uh, megaphone. This is <laughs> something entirely different. So we're going to need to make sure as well for our normal that we've got direct X and just something that I can view. And kind of like with our scratches, um, we're getting that same effect where it looks like these are actually being, uh, they're more like bumps as opposed to little uh, pseudo holes, little semi holes there. Um, and that's just because we're drawing this information from uh, white circles, right? So there's two ways that we could go about fixing this, right? Inverting the, the color value of, or the grayscale value of uh, the tile generator. But that is going to require another node. So I'm going to instead just switch the intensity on our normal map to negative one. And so now it looks like we're actually getting more like a golf ball almost. So now that I can see this, I want to go ahead in our tile generator and maybe bump up the amount to 150 by 150. And uh, that's looking even still a little too big. Um, I can come down into our scale option here and just decrease the scale to something really, really tiny. We can also play around with the scale random. Maybe bring the uh, scale down to something like that. And now I want to uh, play around with the, the randomness of the position, right? Because it's very uniform. Uh, kind of looks like a bulletin board now. Um, and that's not really what I want. I want it to be random, kind of like little random uh, pock marks. So I'm going to just increase our X random and our Y random. So now that we're getting this uh, very random array of these uh, little divots. And again, if I keep coming down, we can also play around with the luminance random because right now they're all kind of the same value. And that's going to uh, play around with how um, deep each one of these go, right? But if I increase the, the randomness, we're going to basically just decrease the intensity of some of these so that it's not like a uniform spread of all of these little marks. And it's just going to add, again, to some of the believability of this. And I'm probably just going to, I'm going to put it up to 100% there. Right? And already this is starting to look cool. We're catching some of the light uh, in these marks in the normal map here. And it's just adding again to some of that believability of that surface. So now that we've got this, uh, our normal setup, I want to go ahead and use that as a segue to start working in our roughness map because we're going to be able to use a lot of this uh, edge information in our normals here. So what I'm going to do is use a curvature smooth node and bring this guy in. And you can see now that we're getting a lot of these different uh, edge information, right? We're getting the little holes and then some white values around it, and then kind of just a general gray tone um, in between all those spaces there. And so this is going to allow us to get some interesting roughness information that is directly derived from our normal information. All right. And so I'm going to add a blend onto here. Again, making sure that we're using our uh, mask to mask this guy off. And we will go up and mask our normal map off in a second. And I'm going to just drag this guy in over top. So now you can see that our uh, roughness map here is only affecting our bullhorn. However, the problem with this roughness is that uh, it's giving us, again, the shinier or glossier areas as the little divots because they're black on our grayscale here. 
So I'm going to go and add a levels to this and just invert our values here and then have this ability to control kind of the, uh, the roughness or the smoothness of it all. So I want to make sure that our pox are a little bit, you know, rougher so that when we have light going into them, you can still kind of see uh, those pock marks. And then we can play around with the mid values to make it a little bit glossier, a little bit not. As well as the outputs to kind of clamp in how glossy or how rough it can get. And again, this comes down to just really just fine tuning it, whatever you think looks good. There really isn't, uh, well, there might be a science behind it, but beats the heck out of me because I don't know it. It's just a guessing game. You know, play around with it and get an eyeball for what you think looks good. So I'm happy with that right now. So now that we've got that, I'm going to come back up. And I just want to make sure that I am masking off the appropriate uh, normals here so that not all of it is going over top of everything. And again, remembering that we want our uh, normals on the top there and then these normals down on the bottom. All right, so that's starting to look pretty cool. So now that we come back to our roughness, we can also play around a little bit with some extra uh, smudging, right? Because right now we've got, you know, some information from the normals, but anything else that's not in the pock marks there is pretty, uh, it's pretty uniform color, right? So we can take a look here, right? It's it's relatively uh, uniform there. So one thing that we can do is. On a blend node, come in and look for a uh, grunge map. And we can take a look and see what uh, grunge maps we've got here. And that might be a little bit too harsh. Let's see what else do we got. And something like that looks pretty good, right? It's, it's soft, but a little contrasted in areas. So I'm going to take a look at that right there and just bring this in. Right, and it's going to give us some more uh, irregularities in our uh, roughness here. But of course, right, I still want to be able to keep those pock marks and everything underneath, and I still want to have uh, that kind of general surface uh, roughness just with some added elements of this grunge map that we're adding. So again, just making sure to uh, left click and steal this mask over here so that we don't have it on the rest of our material. I'm going to click on this guy and I'm going to use the overlay. And that's going to give us just some irregularities, but also it's going to keep, you know, a lot of our uh, pock marks there just to maintain that level of realism. And I might want to even come in and just decrease that opacity as well because it might be a little bit too harsh. So maybe something like 0.5, right? With your roughness map, you don't really want it to be too uh, extreme or too contrasted. You want it to kind of remain very uh, blase uh, range here, where you know maybe there's a little bit of a darker area over here. But another reason I like the overlay method for this blending is it really works well if I go and change the value of my uh, initial curvature here because it's just taking the values and altering the values based on uh, the value of the grayscale itself. So overlay is a really good one that I like to use for uh, roughness maps. As I come back out now down here again with our metallic, because nothing in this uh, material is going to be uh, metallic per se, we don't really need to add any of that. And so I'm just going to let it blend through. And for our ambient occlusion, again, um, we can go ahead and add these little pox uh, in our ambient occlusion. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. However, this part, much like our scratches, is a little bit negligible because they're such small occlusions. But I feel like might as well show it. So in our ambient occlusion, again, I'm going to blend. And taking these little pock marks. I'm going to just plug this guy in over top. 
And I want to make sure that I basically invert this by using our subtract. So now you can see that all of our pock marks are actually getting some shadow information. But because they're so small, they don't actually need something that drastic. So I'm going to do something like 0.15. And so you can see if you zoom out, you don't even really notice them. Uh, but you don't want to have something that's, you know, just ridiculously dark because there is no way that these, you know, uh, little uh, pox are anywhere near deep enough to be as dark as 100% uh, uh, shadowed. So that's just going to be a little bit more uh, subtle realism for us. And so the final thing I want to do for this material is go ahead and start adding some text, right? And we can learn how to work with text in Substance Designer. So I'm going to bring this guy over here and bring this just up so that we have some more space to work down here. All right. So I just want to make sure that we can add a new uh, color into this here. And I'm going to duplicate this guy. And I'm just going to make him black for now so that we're going to be able to see uh, where our text is showing up. So if I come down to our little space over here, maybe move this guy back, we actually have a node called text. And you can see what it does is it just brings up a little text node uh, editor here, you know, kind of like Photoshop or the like. And we're going to be able to come into our parameters and we can just start typing words, right? So one of the uh, features of a megaphone is the uh, whistle. And I'm going to do this actually in all caps, whistle. And we can also change the font. So any font that you have installed on your machine is going to be accessible in this uh, font menu here. So I'm going to use impact for this, right? Nice, big, and bold there. And uh, actually, does it even matter if I use? Yes, it does. All right. So make sure <laughs> if you're using impact to uh, use the capitalized letters. So we can also change the font size here. And you can see that we actually have these handles. So we can start changing even the position or the rotation of these automatically. So we don't even need to hook them up through uh, transform nodes. So what I'm going to do is just plug this guy in as our mask. And you can see that now we're getting whistle show up over top of our entire material here. And I can go ahead and even just start moving this around. And we're going to have whistle, you know, showing up in various areas of our material. But we need to figure out, okay, like where the heck actually is uh, this handle here, right? Because it's a little bit difficult to tell uh, where it is. We can take a look at our mask down here. And you're like, okay, that uh, kind of helps a little bit, I guess. Um, but we can also come into our resources here. And we can drag in our UV. And the UV is also going to be able to help just kind of see all of the UVs around our, our mesh here and give us a bit of an understanding as to what the possible layout of this mesh is. And so we can make sure that this is in grayscale here. And I can just blend these two together and change the blending mode to, uh, where is it, screen. So now we can see whistle over top of our UVs. And if I move whistle around, we're going to be able to see where all of uh, our UVs are for this particular mesh and where we're going to be able to put whistle over top of it. So I just happen to know that this part is actually this part right down here. So if I just, again, hold shift and drag this guy down, And just keep making this guy nice and small. You can actually kind of start to see that, right, this area right here is this guy right here. So it's a little bit uh, skewed or turned. So we're going to have to actually rotate this guy. 
right? And I'm going to try and line up to that right there and continue to bring this guy down. Right, so that we're, we're getting our whistle feature pretty close uh, to where we want it. And it looks like he's maybe a little bit too offset. So if we kind of tilt this a little bit there, we can start to see that we're getting our uh, whistle word show up. So that's pretty handy. We can now start to add text to various things. And in the future, uh, couple tutorials, we're actually going to be using text to not show up on our albedo, but to use the normals that we generate from text to actually create normal information like grooves and insignia and signatures and all of that kind of uh, idea. So this is actually really handy and it's a very useful node instead of trying to figure out how you're going to, you know, block in specific shape nodes and shape primitives to make words or go into Photoshop and export an actual you know, JPEG or PNG image of some text. We have this feature built in for us for so in Substance Designer. So I'm going to, again, just decrease the size of that a little bit. Maybe bring this guy up. And just getting a, you know, like a front-on look here. All right, and that's starting to look cool. So now what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this guy because I want to maintain the same consistent uh, sizing for uh, this node to now create the next text that we want to use. And so this text is going to be siren, as that's another feature for uh, our megaphone here. And I'm just going to blend these together. And again, we want to make sure that we're using our screen so that we can see both of our uh, values show up. And I'm now going to just steal this guy. So now our blend is the output. So I'm going to come over and drag this guy over here. Maybe you have to tilt him a little bit. Oh, not too much. And this is going to allow us to place our siren text. Perfect. So that's looking pretty cool. So now we're getting some text showing up on our asset and it's just making it look that much more like it's a realistic asset, right? And finally, I want to place one more uh, piece of text. And to do that, we're gonna need to make sure to blend and screen. So now, if I just bring this guy over top, I'm going to duplicate this and bring our text over here. And I'm going to call this off slash on. And again, looking at our UVs here to just kind of help us out position this, I'm going to click on our text, bring this down. And now we're going to be able to get some off and on. So now that I've got that, uh, now that I have that all set up, I'm going to just delete that. And we can come in and play around with our color value as well. Maybe give it a little bit more of an off blue. something like that and that's looking pretty awesome all right and so we have finished our uh, kind of speaker material there and we've taken a look at how we can kind of jazz up the uh, the normals and the roughness a little bit to add a little bit more detail to these larger materials we're going to take a look now at how we can go about using some of those practices for our body here. So I'm going to come and make a new substance graph and I'm going to call this body and come back into our megaphone graph here and just drag that guy in 
I'm going to put them right in here with our main materials. And then I'm going to just drag in our ID map here. Cool. So now I'm going to come in and edit that graph. And I'm going to start by just giving it a distinct color here. And I'm going to blend that together. Drag in a uniform color here, making sure we set it down to our 16 by 16. And just bring that guy up. And so we need to, again, identify where on our mask or our ID map here that we want to create our mask. And I know just from uh, my experience with this that these yellow pieces are going to be our mask. So I can go ahead and if I click on our node there, just come in and select that guy. And when I bring this in and I view our outputs in 3D, we're going to be able to see that guy pop up there. So that's really handy. So the first thing that I want to do and something that I think is going to really help this uh, particular piece stand out is I want to get in and start uh, blocking in some of our roughness and using our mesh itself to also contribute to uh, the roughness values that we're going to be getting. So I'm going to move this up here and I'm going to want to get at our roughness. And so a nice thing that I commonly do is I use the normal map, the actual information on our material, uh, to kind of drive the roughness values that we're getting for our roughness map. And so in order to do that, we actually need to convert our uh, normal here to a curvature. And I'm going to use a curvature smooth. So when I bring that in, you can see that we're going to get all of these values here, right? Uh, in a curvature form, but it's a little bit smoother than a regular curvature. And I'm going to, again, invert those values because we're using this for our roughness. And it's going to be uh, kind of inverting our values here for what I want. Because if we just take a look here, bring this guy up and we just blend these together. You can see that it's going to kind of make the edges a little bit rougher here and make the center a little bit glossier. And I kind of want to do a little bit of the inversion of that. So I'm going to do a levels note. Bring this guy over here. And I'm just going to flip this so that we're able to see what's going on. Right, and this is going to be the basis for our mesh here. And I might just change this albedo color to something a little bit easier to see. Kind of like this mid, mid red there. Maybe make that a little bit darker. Yeah, something like that. And the roughness is certainly not helping its case there, but. Now, if we take a look at this, and bring up the specular values here. Maybe not make it that crazy. Bring this down, and I want to also bring in our outputs a little bit so it can't be stupid glossy and stupid rough. All right, so you see we're getting a little bit sharper there, and as we get work our way in, it's a little bit. Uh, rougher, but nothing too drastic, right? So now I want to go ahead and I want to, well, bring these guys back. My OCD is a little uh, bugging me right now. So I'll bring those guys back. And now I want to go ahead and start adding some of those streak lines to this plastic. You know, the kind of like streak lines that uh, plastics get every once in a while where they just have them running kind of along the geometry. And it's going to add a little bit more. Uh, visual appeal and visual believability to this material uh, once we add them. So to start that off, I'm going to use a directional noise uh, three. And this is going to give us those streaks, at least the basis for these streaks, right? So you can see that we're getting 
uh, these directional lines. And if I blend this together, and we take a look, you can see that this is going to give us those streaks. Now, I don't want my streaks to run that way. I want them to run kind of along the, the cylinder, very in a cylindrical fashion, like it's wrapping around our mesh. So I'm just going to come to our directional noise and change the degrees to 90 here. And this is going to give us that directionality. Now, I don't really like what it's doing right now because it's just overlaying, right? Because we have a copy blending mode. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to do a soft light. And this is going to just give us some of those, uh, those streaks that, you know, like look really, really good, actually, I think. They just break up the, uh, the monotony of a uniform uh, looking roughness. And it just gives us, like I said, more visual appeal. We can also play around with a warp node. Maybe if we do something like a uh, Gaussian or Gaussian. I've been called out for how I say Gaussian before. So, uh, you know, to appeal to those fans, you know, who are diehard uh, Gaussian fans. Um, so when I come into this warp, I just want to bring it down. Just to add again a little bit more uh, variation to it, and we can play around with the scale as well. Make it really small, make it really big, and uh, I don't want to do something too crazy. But again, just something that's going to give us some interesting looking uh, results here, some different roughness, right? But you can see now we're going to have this showing up over top of uh, our entire mesh. So I just need to make sure that I come down here and I want to mask this guy off and this guy off as well. So now we're just going to get it showing up over top of our body here. So that's starting to look pretty cool. I just want to add one more uh, area to this and we're going to do something a little bit uh, different and it's going to be using a new mesh map that we actually haven't used before because I want to add a little bit of kind of like just dust particles that have kind of fallen and stayed on top of uh, this guy here, right? And if we take a look at the mesh, we can see that dust would pretty much sit atop here, right? But as we get to kind of the sides here, there wouldn't really have any dust sitting along here because it would just kind of fall off. And so we're going to be able to use a particular mesh map to take a look at that. So I'm going to first start with our Dirt 3 node. And I'm maybe going to just come in here and dial back these streaks as well. Maybe something like 0.75. Just something a little bit uh, easier. And so now you can see that we've got this dirt or this dust. And I'm going to just blend it over top here. Making sure I'm going to switch this to max lighten. Just going to kind of keep some of those flakes. Bring the opacity down to like 0.5 maybe. And we can even change the scale. Just to have it more like, you know, specks of dust. But now what we're going to need to do is actually mask off that area itself. And so I'm going to just make us some room. So we can take a look at this. So I want to try and find a way that we can actually gradiate or create a gradient of our entire mesh here from top to bottom, because I want this to be somewhat of a positional based uh, mask. And the position map here provides just that for us, hence the name, right? So I'm going to bring this guy in and just bring him up to our color. And let's just take a look at what he does. So you can see in our base color, it's going to give us this wacky looking, you know, kind of gradient between all these different colors. And at first glance, it's not really clear what this map does. But we're not using this map for its specific uh, RGB 
combination, we're actually using it for its individual channels, right? It's R, it's G, and it's B independently of each other, and sometimes in collaboration. So what I'm going to do on this guy is add an RGB A split. And you can see now, once we've split this up, it's a little bit more clear as to you know what it's doing, but it's still not entirely clear. But you can see when I plug this into our mesh, right? Well, our, our red channel is giving us a gradient from left to right here. Our green channel is giving us a gradient uh, from up and down. And our blue channel is actually giving us a gradient from uh, forwards to backwards. And so this is the power of using a split uh, node for this position map, is that it will allow us to create a positional mask that we can use for this dust, right? So I'm going to just plug this back in, bring these guys down here. And so underneath this guy here, I'm going to create a grayscale uniform color. Again, setting this to my 16 by 16. And I'm just going to blend the two. And you can see immediately the problem that we're going to get is we're going to get this kind of gray texture and you can't even really see it because it's so small. And that's because this blend node is taking its input size relative to uh, whatever we have inputted in the background here. And because we have a 16 by 16 image, this is going to be 16 by 16. So we need to make sure that it's relative to parent so whatever our parent size is, right, 2048 for this particular graph, it's going to be 2048. So now I can plug this guy in. And nothing's going to happen, right, because we don't have a mask. Well, what I can start doing is, if we remember correctly, the green is for our up and down. I'm going to take this guy in and mask that off. And then I can start using a levels node on this guy to really refine the mask that we have at hand here. So if you take a look, right, I can really crush up the, the whites, crush down the blacks, and this is going to give us a mask that we're going to be able to use. So I also want to just display this mask in our color here. And be careful of your eyes because it's going to be very bright white. But what this is doing is anywhere that there's a white value is going to allow this dust to show up. And anywhere that's black is going to basically disallow that or mask it away, right? So we can take a look at our mesh here and think, well, oh, okay, it's, you know, dust settling around this area is relatively reasonable, but anything below that is going to be pretty much uh, non-existent, right? So we can play around with that and move our gray value up, uh, move our black value up a little bit more so that we have a little bit of a gradient falling off of this area here. So now when I come back to our values, you can see that our dust doesn't extend the bounds of this uh, mesh here and instead is actually only finding the top position topmost position and is falling down over top of that part of it right so if i take another look at this we can find it right we can see some of the dirt up here but as we get down towards here there isn't any dirt settling so that's just another cool mask that uh, we can create from one of our mesh maps that we have using the position of our geometry to replicate kind of real world occurrences that we don't even really think about, right? So that's just something kind of neat that I wanted to show you there. Now, the next part that I want to take a look at is just adding our own scratch components to this material as well. And we can see how they can interact with the material that we have set up already. So I'm going to do the same thing where I come over to our normal and I'm going to just add a, uh, oh, if I can even spell, uh, a scratches generator here. 
And I'm going to want to create a normal from this. And again, taking a look, remember that these scratches are actually going to bump out uh, by default because of the input that we fed into our normal. So we can either invert the scratches generator, but that would require a separate node, or we can go into our normal here. And I'm going to go into the negatives. I'm going to do negative 0.1 because I don't want my scratches to be uh, super indented there. Now, if I bring these down, I'm going to do a normal uh, combine and then just add this over top. And so now we're going to get a bunch of our different scratches uh, on our material here. So if I just bring these guys in over here, maybe just extend the bounds of this a little bit better. And now I need to mask this off of the rest of our material here. So what I'll do is just bring these back. And again, doing the same method that we've always done. Oh, I just suck these both there. I'm going to take this guy and plug him in the top. Take our running normals and put it in the bottom there. And then just mask this off based of our selection here. So now we've only got our normals showing up over here. And so this is going to be uh, pretty cool because we set this up already to go into our roughness. So you can see that we're also going to be using the scratches as part of the uh, roughness calculation. So that's pretty neat. I also want to go ahead and use the scratches as part of my ambient occlusion. If I just bring this guy down, if I could click on it and add a blend. I'm going to come back up to where we have our scratches and just plug this down as part of our blend. And remember to promote our scratches as using uh, or indicating shadow information. We need to just use a subtract blend mode. And then we're going to need to significantly bring that opacity down to something like 0.1. Again, so it's just something very, very minute on our material here. And now I want to play around with my scratches. And I'm just going to play around with the seed. See what kind of info this provides. And actually, I kind of like that. Play around with the number of scratches maybe, uh, as well as the spline scale, maybe bring it down a little bit. Something like that. And that's just going to add some scratch information to it. And now lastly with uh, this material, I want to go ahead and I want to add kind of one of the more defining uh, visual components of this material. And I want to go ahead and I want to add the text that we're going to have kind of as our logo, right? A stand in for our logo. And so we're going to do that the same way that we did the, uh, the options down here on our uh, other plastic material. And so I'm going to come up here, bring this guy over, maybe this down a little bit, and add a blend. I'm also going to create another uniform color here. And maybe make this kind of like a, like a yellowy kind of color. And I'm just going to do a text node. And we're going to use this as, again, the basis for our mask here. So if I plug this in, we can go ahead and type anything we want. And now, obviously, because it's my tutorial, I'm going to type in the name of the channel here. And I want to go ahead and I'm going to use the impact font. And so this is going to allow us to place this anywhere we want. And now I don't need to go ahead and use the UVs because I already know where 
uh, this is going to be placed because you can see the big red part of our mesh is pretty consistent with the big red part of our mesh over here. So if I bring this over top, we're going to have our text start to appear. And you can see that's uh, pretty big because we can only fit two letters over top of our mesh here. So I'm going to greatly bring this down to try and get it to fit in here. And that's even still a little bit too big. So I can just, again, holding shift and scale that down. I want to get that to kind of sit over top there. And maybe I'll get it to line up with our panel here. That looks pretty good. So now we can also play around with it. And uh, if we go with the blend, right, maybe decrease the opacity a little bit, make it a little bit faded, something like 0.85 there. And that's just going to help add a little bit more visual appeal to our material here. And so now that we've completed our body material, I want to go in and just, again, expose some parameters that we're going to be able to play around with uh, once we continue on with this material and start making some new uh, materials for our asset. So I'm going to come up to our base color here, and I want to expose both of these parameters here. So I'm going to do expose and output color and expose output color and we can do output color one so now if i click in our graph to check our parameters we're going to get output color so this is going to be the body color and i'm going to group this under our color group and we're also going to have text color and we'll do the uh, color group as well Oh, but I want to make sure that I lowercase that guy there. Perfect. I also want to come down to our uh, text guy here. And maybe we don't want to, you know, just have get learnt on our materials. Um, we can also select the text option here and just go text. And this is going to allow us to retype out the different uh, word that we want to have on our material. And again, we can go with the font, the font size, alignment, and all of these different uh, positional parameters, right? If you want to be able to remove, uh, to move, sorry, your text around your mesh again without coming back into your graph. But I'm just going to leave that for the sake of this tutorial because I'm not really going to need to come back in and move my uh, text around but that's something to just keep in mind. We can also come over here to our scratches, right? And we can start exposing different parameters for our scratches if you want to have a little bit more flexibility with your scratches, as well as your normal intensity for those scratches. And you can even come down to your levels here where we're masking off uh, the positional values for our dust and you can play around with the levels to give you more or less fall off for those dust particles. So I'm just gonna come back up to our parent graph here and take a look at our body. And if I come into color, we're gonna have these two color options here. And you can see that if I wanted to change this text here, I can change it to say something different. I'm also gonna come into our speaker and I want to make sure that we have some parameters that we can explore too, such as the base color and the color of our text down here as well. So I'm going to come to our color and expose that. And I'm going to come to this color and expose this under a different name. And again, I'm going to do the exact same thing where I come down here, call this speaker color and put this under the color tab and for this guy as well I'm going to do text text color and put this under the color tab as well 
We can also come down to the tile generator here and expose some of these parameters to change the size of these guys, change the number of them, the arrangement. We can also change the intensity value of the normal. So that might be something I'll do, just expose the intensity value. Come back down to our intensity and just call this normal intensity. And as I come back out to my graph here, now we'll be able to take a look, change the color of our speaker uh, material there, change the text color to something like pure white. And then we can go ahead and play around with the normal intensity. So in this tutorial, we've taken a look at just kind of furthering our understanding of how we set up these material graphs and taking a look at kind of furthering the detail that we're putting into some of these different maps, such as our normal or our roughness, right? Some of these maps that are really going to help us sell the illusion of these surfaces. While not much has changed in so much as the process, it's just taking what we know and really trying to think about and wrap our heads around the idea of how real world surfaces interact in our everyday life. So in the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at just finishing up some of the materials and really trying to hone in on what specific uh, surface normalities exist and how we can harness those in Substance Designer to really put our best foot forward in creating realistic materials. So that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. I'll see you in the next video.